2022 has been absolutely stacked with announcements since that last video I put out talking about games to get excited for. So many that since I released my video three months ago talking about 12 RPGs to get excited for, there have been 15 more that I've added to my hype list, sort of. A couple of them are actually games that I forgot about the first time around, but still, I need to talk about them anyway. And what's even crazier is that this list is almost entirely games that are coming out this year, starting with Chrono Cross, which is coming out on April 7th to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Steam. Chrono Cross is obviously a follow-up to Chrono Trigger, and believe it or not, I was actually planning on playing Chrono Cross after my review of Chrono Trigger. I was already planning on it, but it just so happened that Square Enix announced this remaster that they're working on where they've upscaled all of the textures, new higher polygon count models and everything. It looks pretty interesting. I'm very excited. It looks like they may have actually reworked the text. And what's even cooler is that you can actually turn these off if you just want the stock standard experience. I don't know. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do, but I know that this is one that I'm going to be buying and playing as soon as it comes out. I'm going to be playing it over on Twitch as soon as I'm done with my playthrough of Golden Sun. Link in the description if you want to see that. Also coming out soon is Front Mission First Remake, which is coming to Nintendo Switch sometime in 2022. We don't really know exactly when in 2022 yet it is. Front Mission is this mecha strategy RPG series. Well, the first couple just never really came out in the West until now. So also during that announcement of the Nintendo Direct, the sequel to that game, Front Mission 2 Remake for Switch, was also announced. But there's still no date, no year for that one even. And so that's not even on my list of 15. This is just number two so far. Live Alive Remake. This one absolutely stole the show for me as far as uh, as far as that Nintendo Direct goes. That was a game that was originally released on the Super Famicom way back in the 90s, and I played it using a fan translation, which was a lot of fun, but I never ended up making a review of it because of complications and stuff. But I was absolutely blown away with the HD 2D remaster that they're doing for this game. It looks so good. I think it looks like one of the best HD 2D games so far. And anybody who watched my first video about games to get excited for, you know that I love the HD 2D aesthetic. And if you don't, I, I'm sorry for you, man. <laughs> Basically, for anybody who doesn't know, though, Live Alive is this game that is sort of this anthology of a bunch of different movie adventure genres. So you got like Wild West, you've got Samurai, you've got kind of futuristic sort of stuff. It's all kind of mished together into this really crazy story that I don't want to spoil it for you, but it does have some semi-tactical combat systems in it. So it's very interesting. It's definitely an RPG unlike any other that I've ever played. It's kind of zany in sometimes, kind of dark in other times, really dark in other times, you'll want to play this one when it comes out. Honestly, I think that this is going to be a phenomenal game, but we all know that overhyping a game can take the fun out of a perfectly fine game. That's why in my last video, I said this. Hype responsibly, be cautiously optimistic, don't let yourself get hurt. And that's when some of you said this. So in the spirit of hyping responsibly, I am introducing to you my first ever Super Derek merch drop, my Hype Responsibly t-shirt. Most smaller YouTube channels like myself use on-demand printing corporations that take massive cuts in exchange for low-cost prints on low-quality apparel. But for this drop, I'm partnering with a local design and print shop owned and operated by my friends Dane and Ash at Switch Wicked, who designed this awesome shirt, then screen printed by hand each shirt using a six-color process onto super comfortable 60-40 cotton poly blend shirts. But this is where things start to get a little bit interesting, because I could only afford to get about 50 across various sizes made up front. So this is a very limited run of shirts. The proceeds from the first print run will help fund future designs and additional print runs. But if you get in on this drop, you'll get what I'm calling the first print run edition shirt, featuring a first print run seal on the nape of the shirt, and it comes with a hand calligraphed and autographed numbered and waxed sealed thank you note as just one more way for me to say thank you for believing in this channel and for your support. Please check out the link in this video's description to help fund future design ideas. Now, speaking of hyping responsibly, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. It's coming out on Nintendo Switch in September of 2022, and I've honestly missed the boat on the first few Xenoblade games so far. 
Uh, but maybe if I'm really fast, maybe I can catch up before this one comes out. I saw the trailer and I have just been swept up into this gorgeous looking game. I can't wait to see what this is like when it finally does come out. It looks like it's going to be bridging the gap between Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 as I understand it, which I don't honestly understand it that much since I haven't played the games, but I'm still thinking this is going to be pretty dang great. But here's one that really does speak to me on a little bit of a deeper level, and that's Soul Hackers 2, which is coming out on August 25th of 2022 to all major platforms except for the Nintendo Switch. So it's a sequel to Soul Hackers that was originally released on the Sega Saturn and then ported to the 3DS. Now Soul Hackers 2 is like a cyberpunk RPG for 2022 in the same way that the original was a cyberpunk game as envisioned uh, back in the 90s. So this one's a lot more neon, a lot more colorful, but it looks like it's still kind of like in the same universe. If you're already a fan of the original, then you'll definitely want to play this next one and see how things have maybe changed in the 20 years since the first entry was released. And now I'm actually excited about a new Pokemon game. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet was recently announced as coming to Nintendo Switch in late 2022. What's exciting about this is that it looks like it's going to be moving in the same sort of direction that they started to kind of go into with Pokemon Arceus. So it's got more of that open world looking design and aesthetic. It looks like they're kind of doing what they did with Sword and Shield, but just cranking up the notch a lot. And it looks a lot prettier than Sword and Shield did too. The fact that it's coming out this year already is really interesting. I'm very curious to see if they can manage to pull it together in that amount of time. I mean, how long has this been in development? Looks great the the starting pokemon look way better than anything i've seen in recent years honestly the little kitty i love it i love it so much <laughs> Now, here's one that I missed in my last hype video, but we do have a date for it this time around, and it's coming out on September 27th, 2022. We're talking about Trails from Zero. It's coming to Nintendo Switch and to PC and to PlayStation 4. I've already reviewed this game. I've got a full review of this game up right now. You can go watch it in the, the corner here if you want. This is a game that received a fan patch, and that fan patch is being used as the basis for the official localization, which is just mind-blowing. That's not really ever happened before in the United States anyway. And it's incredibly exciting because the team who did the original patch, Geofront team, are incredibly dedicated to the games. In the review, I said, it doesn't matter if it comes to the West because you're not going to get a better release. You're not going to get a better translation than what we got. Apparently, Nipponichi Software of America agreed with that. So they're bringing it to the West in September 27th of 2022. I've already pre-ordered my collector's edition. Make sure you check it out if that's something that you're interested in. Next up, we've got Star Ocean Divine Force, which is coming out sometime in 2022. Don't really know if it's early, late, mid, whatever. It's coming to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Series X and S, and also PC. This is an action RPG featuring sort of like a more semi open world. I don't know what you really call it, but it's not really open world from what I can tell in the trailer. It does have this interesting flying slash gliding mechanic, sort of like you would see in like Breath of the Wild, but it takes place in this like sci fi fantasy setting that also takes place in space. It looks like you might be going to different worlds and uh, part of it just looks so like in it, like it's got this very dreamy aesthetic and I really love that just makes it feel like like something special is in this world and it just makes me want to go in and be a part of it. Also pretty soon we've got Dio Field Chronicle, which is also coming sometime in 2022 to all major platforms. This is that real time tactical strategy RPG that's been developed by Square Enix and Lankars. And if you're not familiar with Lankars, I wasn't. I checked them out. They've also worked on a few various SMT titles as well as Zonky Zero and Monarch. These guys uh, have a pretty good pedigree so far from what it seems. I don't know a whole lot about it. It looks really honestly a little bit daunting because it's a real time strategy RPG. Hopefully it'll be something accessible to people like me who don't have a whole heck of a lot of experience with strategy RPGs because it looks neat. It looks like it's going to be one of those really kind of dramatic really intriguing sort of political uh, warring nations sort of stories. So keep your eyes peeled if that's more of your jam. Also sometime here pretty soon we've got a game called Valkyrie Elysium, which seems to be kind of a polarizing entry in the Valkyrie series at this point because it's breaking away from that turn based combat of the Valkyrie profile game. So this one's looking like it's going to be more of an action RPG set in a very similar universe or maybe the same universe. And it's going to feature music from the fan favorite Matoi Sakuraba. So at least that part isn't departing too far from the previous entries. And I know a lot of people are very excited about that. 
Honestly, the trailer makes it look a little washed out, a little, it, I think it makes it look a little painterly, a little, a little dreamscapey. I'm not sure how a lot of people are going to take that, but you know what? It's coming out this year onto PlayStation 4, PS5, and Windows machines. It could be pretty good. But if you're into the Valkyrie profile games and are not so much in it for the combat of, of the originals, but just like the art and the story and the characters, then this might still be a really intriguing game to you. So keep your eyes out for that coming to PS4, PS5, and Windows sometime here in 2022. Forspoken was previously known as Project Athea, and it's basically an isekai RPG, action RPG. It feels almost like a Western style action RPG, to be totally honest, or based on what I'm seeing here. It basically follows Frey, who's this gal from New York, into a new magical land. And initially, honestly, I wasn't very intrigued, uh, but the world, was just absolutely gorgeous. The combat looks really fluid and it looks very, very flexible. Uh, so I'm definitely keeping my eye out on this one. Once I saw a bit of that gameplay footage of it, I was honestly, I was pretty sold. So unfortunately, I don't have a PlayStation 5 to play it on October 11th, but I do have a PC that might be able to run it a little bit to some degree. I, I don't know, I might need to get a PS5. Now here's another one that I completely overlooked during my last video, and I really shouldn't have because I'm familiar with these guys. I'm, I know, I know. Kingdoms of the Dump looks like an incredible indie RPG on the horizon. It looks like it's going to feature some incredible pixel art, some semi-tactical combat. It's very inspired by Earthbound. You can definitely tell based at least on the setting and some of the characters but it's also inspired by part of uh, Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI. And this is also coming out in October of 2022. And this one though is not yet coming to consoles as far as I know. So it's just coming to PC, Mac OS, and Linux. So I have no doubts that it's gonna work really well on a Steam Deck if that's, you know, more your thing. Now this is a game that I did know about sort of, but didn't really care about it until I saw some recent gameplay on my podcast, Hit Point. When I saw the actual gameplay, I decided to sort of change my mind on, on my thoughts of Euden Chronicle Rising. Prior, something about it just didn't really speak to me. I, I saw the paper cut out, the paper doll style animations, and it really was a huge turnoff to me because it felt a lot like a mobile game. However, seeing it actually in action in the side-scrolling action RPG, it looks like it's actually not gonna bother me too much. It looks like it's a much more zoomed out kind of view, so your characters are a lot smaller. And honestly, it doesn't look as bad as I thought that it would. That's on me, but you know what? You can you can grow beyond your mistakes and be a better person. And I, I am into Euden Chronicle Rising now at this point. Looks like it's coming to all major platforms in 2022. And of course, I think this is also gonna help fund the continued production of Euden Chronicles 100 Heroes, which I did talk about in my last video about 12 RPGs to get hyped for. So yeah, let's let's get hyped about Euden Chronicle Rising, but as long as we remember to hype responsibly. Now this one sort of does fall into rumor mill territory. The game exists, it's been announced, but it's not yet been announced for the West. But this game looks like if it does come out in the West, it's going to grab some attention. It's going to turn some heads. And that game is called Loop 8. And it takes place in a rural Japanese town set in the 1980s. And based on the trailer and what I've seen so far, it looks like it's going to be centered around some conversing with some demons here and there. Uh, there seems to be some turn-based combat. And it looks like it's going to be sort of going after that same target audience as like maybe the Persona titles. I think that this could be really great. Uh, it's been announced in Japan as coming in 2022 to the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, but there's no news about it coming to the West. But I'm honestly excited for it anyway. I want to see this come to the West, and I hope you guys do too. Anyways, if I told you about a new game that you're excited for, be sure to get subscribed because I am Super Derek. I make thoughtful and thought-provoking videos for gamers who love RPGs, and I'll see you in the next one. I responsibly, everyone.